Hi everyone, thank you so much for taking the time to out your busy days to watch these videos. I do appreciate it as always. You may have noticed that I've not posted a video for well, quite a few weeks now. And there's a reason for that, which I'll get to in a second. But I thought I'd just give you a, a just general lowdown of what I've been doing, what I've been up to, what I've learned, um, and to invite any feedback from yourselves, any experiences you want to share um, for my next video. So first and foremost, the reason I haven't posted any videos lately is because, generally speaking, I've been taking the time to actually go out on the boat and see if it's something I can handle, be happy with, um, and so and try and build up the hours and the confidence so that I'm happy to take the boat out with people. And so the result is I've just been busy trying to get that to understand if, if living with the boat is something I really want to do. And so the result of that is longer term, if I do, I'm absolutely loving it. And here is my boat, Sea Hound, in all of a mud backfield glory. So we sit in the Thames on a little place called Canby Island and right in the distance over there, I'm not sure if you can see it, right over there, that south end, the south end pier. So we have the Thames estuary coming past us. And so as the Thames floods, as the tide's coming in, it comes around this creek here and floods the yacht club that I'm a member of. And as you can see, right now, the tide is just starting to turn and come in. So you can see how quickly it starts to come in. But that will take about 90 minutes for all of this area here, all of this mud to disappear. Um, a bit high tide on a on a higher tide all of this marshland here will be covered as well um, but yeah hopefully you can see just how quickly that's coming in but there's there's my beauty she's been absolutely immense fun so far and I'll just talk you through what we've got here in case any of you're wondering so where I bought this boat from in Suffolk because I'm one of those marines with all the floaty pontoons which are absolutely beautiful but as you can see here we don't have that luxury here it's, it's all wooden jetties the cost of putting those floating jetties in is quite extortionate and it's not something the club can afford so we have these wooden jetties so we have a front mooring post here and we have a rear mooring post and then what we have in between, if you can see the, the wooden plank here, that's a slider. So as the boat sits on the mud and the tide comes in, it rises, that slider board takes the friction of rising and bumping against the jetty from these sliders here, this slider here, and that post there. So you have your fenders behind the board so that nothing on the um, boat hull can get damaged. You may be asking as well why I've got this rope here. So basically we've, we've learned through taking it out with family and kids. Now as we come into more and cutting the power and just kind of just gently easing it in in order to just be able to walk it in a bit easier, particularly if it's a strong current or a strong wind, it's good for the wife and the kids to be able to grab hold of the rope and almost walk us in and then as soon as I've cut the power I can get out of the boat and help bring the boat alongside a bit easier. Just a tip we've got from someone else. So let's go on the boat and I'll I'll show you what else I've um, learned in the last few weeks. Well first things first if anyone knows how I can stop the birds from using my boat as a toilet all suggestions would be welcome other than shooting them or poisoning them because at the moment every time I come over here I have to clean the boat down because it's usually had a fair bit of damage from seagulls but actually that's not too bad not too bad at all and a little 
small turd there. It's usually the canvas that takes the beating, and there are a few on there, which I have to keep washing off. So one of the first tips I can give you that I've, I did, when the boat was out the, wind, out the water over the winter, my son and I, we emptied the chain, laid it on the ground, and we marked it out. I'm not sure if you can quite see it, but you've got blue and gold parts of the chain there. So every five meters, we sprayed the chain blue, and every 10 meters, we painted part of the chain gold. Now I don't have a chain uh, counter, so when, once we're looking at the depth we're in, in order to gauge how much chain we're putting out um, from the, the windlass there, electric windlass, we use those colour markers to give us an indication. And so far, it seems to have worked quite well. So if you're new to and don't have the ability to, or don't have a mechanism of counting chain, it's quite a good visual aid to help make sure you put out the right amount of chain when you're anchoring. The second lesson I've learned is that these lovely pretty looking fenders in blue and white whilst they look good and I've got eight of those and I paid about £150 I think for them um, they're probably too small for the boat in hindsight I had some of these old fenders when I bought the boat I probably should have gone for something more like that just to help protect the boat a bit more as you can see these moorings are quite narrow and on a strong tide or a strong wind it can be a bit precarious coming here and if you're going to bounce off people I think it's better to have much more protection than those fenders so they'll do for the season but I think I'm going to I'm going to get rid of those for next season but one of the other investments I did make is that large round blue fender you can see there so again when my neighbour brings his boat in, if there's any chance of the back coming round, it's a it's a good it's a good buffer between his boat and my boat. But I think these bigger fenders are the answer just to make sure there's no material damage going forward. So let's now go inside the boat and have a look at what else I've been up to. So one of the things I've been doing every opportunity I get is to come down here when the tide's flowing in or there's sufficient tide as it's going out for me to practice mooring that was one of the things I was most concerned about the tide and or the wind taking the boat away from my control um, and it was a bit precarious at first but I've done it enough times now that I've got the confidence to bring the boat in um, in pretty much any condition so far so that's one of the big I'd say nervous points of boat ownership that I've got over um, but one of the other things I'm having to get into the habit of and give myself plenty of time to do is to make sure I wash the boat down each time so whilst I wash the outboard through each time I get back I'm having to take a lot more time to clean both the interior and the exterior of the boat including the cockpit area and it still needs a bit of a improvement process I can still see some dried salt from uh, last weekend's activities but I do bring the hose in and try and clear it down as much as I can and it tends to take at least an hour or so after we get back to really wash the boat down. So it's just a bit like golf really, you have to give yourself quite a few hours when you're going to be going out and also when you get back to make sure you give yourself sufficient time to do all the things you need to be doing. Um, the other thing I've learned, and I bought the, um, the ropes whilst the boat was still actually uh, on, on the half standing before it got launched earlier this year. And so I've gone for this 17 mil rope. But what I really didn't think about was just how much room I've got on the cleats to put a few turns on. So as you can see, it doesn't give you much space. So I think a lesson learned for any other new boats is if, you could, if you're gonna get new ropes for your boat, um, perhaps if you can get a sample to at least take your boat and try it around your cleats to see if you've got enough space. I'm not sure if all chances will do that, um, but certainly I wish I'd, I'd done that. So that's another lesson I've learned. Um, the other thing I've, I've done is I've got the Savvy Navi 
uh, app on my phone now. So I tend to use that with the low rants um, system as well when I'm out. So whilst this is great for giving me my overall position, the great thing with um, Savvy Navi is that it auto calculates any route you want to want you want to go on, and it also gives you tide height and wind direction, which is something this older system here doesn't doesn't give me. And I'm, as my first boat, I'm loath to start playing about with electrics and and changing anything that I could nose up. Um, so yeah, I'm going to keep this as it is and just use my Savvy Navi app to help me in the meantime. The other thing I've got, and there's a box down here with the parts in, so the, in here, is that I need to also replace the rubbers around these windows. So as you can see, they're a bit perished. So I've had a new expense. The rubbers for both windows um, with the, the supply issues from the Beneteau factory and the way that all these things work with import tax and stuff is that I got it, I ordered it through Ancaster. They paid the taxes um, to for buying from a French company and then they just charged me uh, the delivery charges from uh, them and obviously the UK uh, back. But these two rubbers in terms of give me a little bit more um, for this for the port side as well and the starboard side was about 151 pounds but i did i did actually order maybe probably a meter and a half more than i needed i just want to make sure that again i've got some room to make errors and what i've seen so far i did try to do it myself the other day but it's a two-man job I, I don't have long enough arms that i can try and unscrew things and hold things through the window at the same time so it's a two-man job um which I'm probably going to do towards the end of the season. It's, there's no water ingress coming in at the moment, so rather than play with things at the moment, I'm going to keep using the boat and enjoying it, which is what it's all about after all, and maybe do this at the end of the season. Anything else I've learned whilst using the boat? So with this engine, 150 horsepower Suzuki, it is supposed to be good for 30 knots. I've touched that once um, with a strong wind behind me. Generally speaking, it'll easily get to um, 28 knots, but in a, in a going head on into a, a strong tide or a strong wind, 24, 25 is probably more towards its limits. But for me as my first boat, it's perfectly fast enough for what I want to do and how fast I want to get there, but as I say, um, it's all about how, how fast, if you have an, an incident, how fast it is you want to have that incident. And so for me, I'm taking things nice and cautious um, whilst the family and I get up to speed and build all of our confidence up. But I think we're probably just at the point now where we're comfortable to start taking some uh, other friends and family out with us. We've been going out with uh, my brother-in-law, who's an experienced boater, to make sure that, again, we're not doing anything stupid or, or unsafe. And I think he's pretty satisfied with what we're doing. It's probably worth saying that in the half hour or so that I've been here doing this filming, and I did say earlier in the video just how quick the tide can come in. So in half hour, it went from that little trickle coming in to currently that. So you can see how just how quick the tide comes in and, and the, the underlying strength of that tide. Um, just thought you might be interested to see that actually. And See a bit of wildlife there. Fascinating. So I think probably for this video, that's a that's about it. I'll try and get some videos of us out in the boat. So we've done some fishing on it. We've used it just for some, uh, you know, an hour or so out on the boat, and then sit on the back of the boat once we've washed everything down to have a have a good drink and enjoy just relaxing on the water with a breeze. Uh, so yeah, it's. It's been a really enjoyable experience. I feel really privileged to to have the opportunity to have this boat and to use it. And I'm really, really enjoying it with the family. So what, my one big reason for wanting the boat is to recreate some of those holiday experiences that we have when we go abroad. And the fact that we can't go abroad at the moment, this is a massive, massive um, positive experience for us in these lockdown times. So do I regret it? No, it's a good fun. 
Yes, is it expensive? Probably underestimating some of the costs as you've probably seen in some of my videos and some of the parts, uh, the park costs are, are a bit pricey at times, which I wasn't possibly expecting. But overall, it's been a really, really positive experience. So that's it for this video, I think. I'll take some more video in the next few days out on the boat. Uh, if you've got any questions, comments, observations, please do let me know. Um, be lovely to grow the audience a bit more um, for us fellow new boaters. Um, and in, until the meantime, or until next time, let's say, enjoy what you're doing, stay safe, stay healthy, and if you can get a boat, get on one, you won't regret it. Speak to you later. Bye-bye.